Ladies and gentlemen, today's guest is Damien Beatdown Brown. Uh, Damien Brown is a uh, former UFC fighter. He's fought in Ryzen. Uh, he's a commentator. He's a coach. Uh, he's a promoter. Uh, and uh, he's coming on to chat Beatdown Promotions 5, uh, which is the Eaton's Hill Hotel in, uh, in Queensland. Um, Janae Harding takes on uh, Jamie Edenden. And uh, we've chatted with Jamie Edenden before. Uh, leading up to this card, Janae Harding has fought in Bellator and and had a nice little career, and uh, and they'll be main eventing uh, among many other Australian MMA fighters. And so, of course, we've got Damian Brown, who we've had on the show many times before, uh, to chat this card. And look, it's very very interesting, very interesting chat. Uh, I think we chat for like forty five minutes or so, uh, and if you want to listen to the fights, skip right to the end, about half an hour, because um, that's when we start doing so. Uh, we chat his uh, his return to sort of competition. He's in a jiu-jitsu match uh, against a well-known uh, head coach of a well-known MMA gym. Uh, so stick around for his thoughts on that. Uh, but look, the first half an hour is is weirdly, as always, just just me and him talking talking shit. Um, he's got a very unique philosophy when it comes to being a coach, fighter, promoter. He doesn't want to be the biggest, baddest promotion in the world. He's got a very unique vision. Uh, he also gives his thoughts on how he goes about with matching guys, you know, uh, negotiating pay or, or other sorts of things. Uh, he gives us his thoughts on on the state of Australian MMA. And basically, if you're a promoter, fighter, or coach, I feel like you could learn a lot uh, from, from this. Uh, he's also on the show previously said he will never retire, which is um, why we always address the rumors of him fighting again. Uh, and, uh, of course, the rumors of him fighting UFC legend George Sotoropoulos, uh, who at one point in time was one of the best UFC fighters we'd, we'd ever produced. Uh, that fight was kind of happening, nearly happening, sort of happening, not happening. And, uh, and Damien sort of... Let's us all in on uh, on why it may not be happening. In fact, why it isn't happening, although it can in the future. Uh, but we do kick off with an interesting story. Um, and if you've seen the interview with Jamie Edenden, uh, if you haven't, I would suggest you, you go and check that out. Uh, there was an issue, I believe, back in March um, between herself and Annie Thatcher at Beatdown Promotions 2 or 3. Uh, there was an issue at the weigh-ins where a fighter weighed in over. Uh, one of the fighters, after deliberation, she was already coming up weight and whatnot, uh, decided to, to not take the fight, which was very polarizing at the time with some people saying, you know, you're a fighter fight, other people applauding the decision because, you know, you're holding each other to a professional standard. And look, it really did split the scene uh, down the middle. Um Damien goes into a bit of the details. If you don't understand it, uh, do hit up the Jamie Edenden um, interview that we've got. Um, or just, I don't know, message Annie Thatcher. I'm sure she'll explain as well. Uh, but look, uh, Damien goes into that and uh, he gives his thoughts on uh, his perspective as, as a fighter, a coach, and more importantly, the promoter. But guys, without further ado, because we've already done half a podcast now before even getting into it, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Damien Brown. Ladies and gentlemen, joining me on the show, Damien Beatdown Brown, who is here to promote Beatdown Promotions 5, September 16th, Eaton Hills Hotel in Queensland for Beatdown Promotions 5. You can see it by subscribing to Beatdown on YouTube, or I believe you can still get tickets at beatdownpromotions.com. Yes, you can still get tickets. Not many. We will probably sell out again. Um, but yeah, good show coming up this weekend. We've got 14 fights. Full stack lineup, but thanks for having me on again. I appreciate it. I love a chat. Anytime. Uh, will there be any controversial weight cuts where fights won't take place uh, in the main event like you had at Beatdown Promotions? Was it two with Jamie yeah, I, Edenden? Oh yeah, I, well, I see where you're going here. I see where you're going here. <laughs> right. I, know, like, I know you like to stir the pot. All right. There's three sides to every story, guys. Um, Look, it is what it is. People miss weight all the time. Uh, as a promoter, it was difficult, but 
I'm okay with it. You know, people make their own decisions and uh, they're entitled to do that. Um, as a fighter, I fought plenty of people that are overweight. Uh, like, I fought Frank Camacho was five pounds overweight, you know. Um, no question in my mind when they asked me if I wanted to fight, but you know, the sport is evolving these days. It's a little different to what it used to be. You know, it used to be just take a fight and you're good to go. And again, I, I have a different path to a lot of people. I feel like there's a lot of a lot of things I did that, you know, um, there's a lot of lessons there to be learned. And I don't think everyone needs to take the approach that I took. And as a promoter, I try to keep that in mind as well. And same as I do as a, as a coach for my students. So, um, you know, Annie was well within her rights to, to not take that fight and she did that and um moved on to fight again um so that's that's the way it works and um you know jamie by our own admission missed weight and this is what it is did you enjoy that i accidentally opened that can of worms while talking to to her <laughs> uh, you know man i believe that there is never such thing as bad publicity <laughs> it's just what you do with it so um look i'm happy that I'm happy that the show was talked about. Um, and at the end of the day, I think both of them would agree that as an, as an event and a promoter, we did everything in our power to make the fight happen or to accommodate both of them. Um, you know, and they both alluded to it or talked about it. Jamie did offer a hundred percent of her purse to make the fight go ahead. Um, and, you know, Annie did have like a weight. They wanted her to be a weight the next day, like, and just from both sides, it just didn't make a whole lot of sense. And they just decided that wasn't, you know, that it wasn't going to work for them. So, you know what? I'm okay with that. If that's um, if that's where they're sitting, and at the end of the day, when it's one of my students, um, you know, I just look and go, "All right, he missed weight. Do you want it?" And if they go, "Oh," Okay, fights off. Yeah. The minute you hesitate, you're not committed, we're pulling it. If you're committed, you don't hesitate, you're like, fuck them to smash them. <laughs> then I'm like, cool, you're in. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter what yeah. the weight, weight miss is. You know, more, more importantly than the fight and the weight and do take fights is like, where's your fighter at? You know? Um, and in that situation, if I was Annie's coach and we're three hours down the track and it's like, you know, we want like a, a weight cut off for the next day. We want this much of the purse. And like, I'd be like, do you want the fight? Like we're three hours in. And if there's hesitation, then the right thing is to not take the fight. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, so they absolutely made the right decision. Um, you know, and I, I, I do the same thing for my guys. You know, if their heart's not in it, their head's not in it, someone missed weight, they're just like, it doesn't matter if it's 100 grams or fuck five kilos, bro. If you want the fight, you take the fight. If you don't want the fight, you'll hesitate to take the fight. Then there's all these stipulations, which again, just to reiterate, you're entitled to do, hmm. you know, but if you don't want it, don't take it. And you, and she didn't do anything wrong. She made weight. She did everything right. She stayed. She, she was at the event, you know, it is what it is. It's just a fight that falls through and it happens all the time. Uh, happened you... at the highest level recently with Wonderboy Thompson. So, yeah, you know, it's, at the end of the day, it's 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 not the end of the world. So you'd have a you have Annie Thatcher on again. Look, if if it made sense, if it made sense, um, and yeah, I don't I don't really. I mean, I just had Jamie on. She missed weight. You know, I had Michael Stanoff back. He missed weight. You know, he missed weight against my guy. If I'm going to be dirty at anyone, I should be dirty at someone that missed weight against my guy. He missed a catch weight that he asked for, you know, and he missed it by kilos. So, you know, I'll have people back on. They come, they put on a fight. At the end of the day, you know, I'm a promoter and we're putting on a show for people to perform and, and um, you know, showcase their skill set. And uh, there's contracts in place. And if she doesn't want to take a fight because someone missed, then she's entitled to do that. Not, I don't feel disappointed by it or anything. Um, you know, I think that if it was the other way around, I'd feel the same. But um, no one misses weight twice on my show. <laughs> so you miss weight twice, you don't come back.
you know, I just, I'm just not, I don't like the, I don't like the hiccups. You know, it's, it's the same. I don't like, you know, just, I don't like people that are hard to deal with. You know, I don't like it in my gym. I don't like it in my life in general. I don't like it when I'm promoting, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, Hey, here's a date. Here's a fight. I don't mismatch fights, you know, um, even the fights where records, people look on paper and go, oh, that fight shouldn't happen. They've been bangers, you know, like mm-hmm. it's easy to look at Paul Logo versus Peter Benavente and be like, why did that fight happen? Benavente like made him fight three rounds. Yeah. He didn't go in there and finish a guy that was like one and two. You know, the guys had hundreds of street fights. And I don't mean that in like, like a gangster kind of street fight way. I sat in a taxi with him and said like, hey man, is your record good? And he was like, no. Nah. I've had like a hundred fights. <laughs> oh, here's Max. Yeah. Huh? The Max, Max Kelly. Kelly. The Max, Max Kelly. Kelly. Hey. Hey, what's going, what's going on? on? Oh, it's Max good. Max hijacks all my shit. Yeah. So, I watch these videos. I watch these videos online. Yeah. You know, Mitch asked me the other day if there's anyone you should talk to in the lead up to beat down. Yeah, it's didn't, fucking me. I didn't give him your name. Good, good no, content didn't. for me. I didn't. I'm an 0 and 1 pro, and you're still going to get better content than me than you fucking yeah. main event. So yeah. <laughs> I listen to this all day, every day. Oh, jeez. Um, yeah. So, um, look, you know, where was I at? Um, yeah, I just like I just like stuff that's easy to deal with. But I understand, like in business, sometimes there's you know, situations and deals and contracts and whatever. Like, I, I'm not new to business. You know, I understand that it it has. Um, it's difficulties at time, but where, where I can avoid it, I'll avoid it, you know? Um, but you know, I, I don't mismatch fights. So, you know, my, my thought is like, I'm going to send you a day. You know, if you say you're available, I'm going to look to match you up. I'm going to send you a name. I might send you two. be like, Hey, I've got these guys available. Which one do you want to fight? You know what I mean? And then I'll send it back to the other guys and be like, Hey, you want to fight this guy? Then they all go, yeah, let's do it. And then, like, offer him a purse. I don't want to go back and forth 10 times negotiating over $100. I'll just offer you a good average Australian purse, yeah. a p- purse that I think is reasonable. I'm not like, hey, you want to fight for $500? Oh, come on. Can you do 1000 <laughs> I'd rather do 600 600 You know, like, it's, like, I just have, like, a set amount that I offer people for their first fight, a set amount that – and it's, it's relative to the industry. Um, I'm not trying to, like – cross people out so athletes don't want to fight for other shows i just keep it standard that's how you keep the industry flowing and and uh that's how you keep fighters happy and if they take they take their fights then you know that's the people i want to work with you know i don't don't want to be like working with people that are like i don't know if i want to fight oh yeah i do want to fight oh fuck sorry i've got to fight elsewhere like back and forth back and forth you know the easier you are to work with the better chance i'm going to do business with you so you don't you don't negotiate purses at all uh, look, man, I'll just say the fighters, like, what do you want to get paid? <laughs> I am, you know, like, well, I just want fighters to be happy. You know, like, what do I got to negotiate about? What money. Like what? Like what? <laughs> like, but, but a hundred like, bucks it, with, with 20 fighters, a hundred bucks either side is two grand. You know what I mean? Maybe, but it's like, like what's two grand? I mean, to some people, a lot, but like... Yeah, but, but, but like, but like if I'm running... So I've got seven pro fights, right? So we've got 14 yep. pro fighters. 100 bucks is 1,400 bucks. Yep. What price do you put on one unhappy, pissed off fighter that's like, fuck it, he's not paying me enough money. He was hard to deal with as a promoter. I'm going to pull out of this fight because I've got a broken toe. Or you go, man, this guy's awesome to deal with. He shows unreal. He was easy to deal with, you know... Like fuck it, I I really want to find this this card. Like I don't know. Like obviously, you know, if someone comes to me and says, "Hey man, like on five grand," sorry, bud, I can't do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I've had guys. They're like, I've offered them a fight. They're like, yeah, four thousand dollars. I was like, see you later. You know, like I'm not being rude, but like that's just that doesn't exist. You know, like you can't pay people that. Like no. Eternal probably don't pay people that. Uh, you know, fucking hex probably don't pay people that. 
Like no. they've got they've got their guys they've got to pay that for. But you know, like you're you're, you're one of them. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like there, there's guys like that that fight in this in this country. You know, that want that want money that deserve their deserve their mm. pays or whatever. But like, you know, if you're just trying to avoid a fight, you're asking for shit money. Like right? it's. You sort of most promoters can see that, like, okay, you don't want the fight. Well, I'm not going to pay you to take it, you know. So it's it's not, it's not. I just I'm just like pretty easy to deal with, um, you know. Tip, I think I've got a pretty good feel as a fighter for what the uh, the athletes in the industry get paid in Australia. So, you know, I just don't feel like I'm being unreasonable when I make a purse offer. You know, for the most part, I'm like, okay, debut guy. I know most promotions are probably trying to pay him between 500 and 750. So what's wrong with paying him 750? Why do I have to go 500 and land on 650? Mm. Just paying 750. It's not much money. I mean, fuck, they're getting their face punched in. Do you know what I mean? Like, but I get like from a business point of view, yeah, it's 1400 bucks. It's better in your pocket. Maybe you could spend it on a video to promote it. Maybe you could spend it on, I don't know, sponsored ads or something like. I get it from a business point of view, you can spend it elsewhere, but you know, that, that, that hundred bucks for a good relationship's not, it's not a lot of money. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not talking thousands. I was not like giving some kind of rubbish secrets away. Well, all I'm trying to say is I'm pretty reasonable. I understand the industry and I'm not really in the back and forth bickering over 50 bucks. Um, so if they're like want an extra hundred dollars, it, it's okay. If they come to me and they're like, I want three grand or four grand and I've offered a 1500 bucks. We've got a different story. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I think if you talk to any of the fighters that I've dealt with in the past, they'll tell you that like it was, it was pretty, it was pretty reasonable to deal with. Them. Yeah. I mean, look, I mean, most people would know or maybe they don't, but like, most champions of, of good organizations, if you're only looking at 1500 or two grand, if you're lucky. So four grand, like you said, is actually kind of outrageous. Uh, so, and uh, I mean, when, when you go to planning these, these next couple of cards, like you've got Janae Harding on who's had a resume of, you know, she fought in Bellator and stuff like that. It, when you first put forward these fights, I mean, do you know how much they're making in other organizations and at what stage of their career they're in or no, how do these fights I think come about? Someone like, I think someone like Janae, you just say, hey, listen, like, like for for example, I've been in the same situation. I fought in the UFC, mm. fought in Rising. I mean, paid pretty well, you know. I set up my life with it. I'm happy with it. I don't have any regrets. Would I go back to the local scene for a couple of grand? No. You know what I mean? Um you know, and so it's just a case of going like, hey, like I understand what's going on here, but my stage of my career, I was like mid-30s, man, when I was cut from the UFC. You know what I mean? Like I've only got like a few more sort of fights and then career's done. So it's like that's different to someone at 30 that's like, oh, you know, it'd be really nice to find the UFC one day. Yeah, they, They're like going to come back to the local circuit because, you know, you get you get your hustle on, you get more fights. Mm -hmm. It's just to find Bellator. It's no different to the UFC where you're like, you might fight two, three times a year. You get paid better money, but the idea of fast tracking your, yourself to the next goal is not the same. So if you want, if you want that, you know, to stay busy, unfortunately in the industry, you do have to go back to the local scene. What's difficult for fighters, me included, is going back to the local scene and accepting the conditions of local MMA once you've been above that. And I don't mean above that like we're too good for them. But once you earn that spot at the top and you get that opportunity and you get the rewards, the five-star hotels, the you know, extra corner, like whatever it is you get, yeah. you know, under the 20 grand US, minus some bullshit international country tax or something they take off, you're like, you, you know, once you get that, it's hard to go back to that two grand. Yeah. You know? But if your objective is to reach that next level again, then you can't have to. So, you know, you really just reach out. I just reach out to people and be like, hey, look, you have thought about fighting locally again? They're like, oh, no, fuck, I'm not doing that. Sweet. Cool as. You want to come hang out at one of my shows? They're like, let's watch fights together. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you're like, yeah, I have thought about it. You're like, well, how much money do you want? Like, let's forget the opponent. You know, the opponent's irrelevant. Yeah. At this point, it's like, can I afford you? Well, 
I want 10 grand. Sorry, man, I can't really do that. Like, I run a business above board. <laughs> can't really float <laughs> money around. You know what I mean? I don't really have that money floating around. So it's like, okay, cool. So, like, because you can go to other countries, get paid. They're paying in your hotel room. You know what I mean? Mm. So, like, I can't do that. So it's it's like, I can't really do that. Okay, cool. What can you do? I can probably do this, but you have to fire this person. All right, done. You know, and literally, like, working with Janae was one of the easiest things I've done. As far as dealing with someone that's forward internationally, she literally told me what she expected locally, and I told her I could do it. And okay. that was it. That was it. It was that easy. Uh, I mean... There was a little uh, bit more to it as, as far yeah. as like she was like, oh, how can I earn more on top? And then we, we you know, we, we worked some extra shit into the deal and, and whatnot. So there was that sort of stuff. But like, you know, at the end of the day, domestically, she was very, very reasonable to deal with. She's very easy to promote. She promotes herself. Um, and I like it. We've known each other for a long time and it was, it was very easy to get a deal done. And, um, she was reasonable, you know, not, not, she had reasonable expectations about coming back to the domestic scene. Yeah. No, I don't. If it, I come it, back it, domestically, like you got to pay me five figures at least. <laughs> I mean, Hex tried. Um, no, they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> they tried to get me back to the local scene. They didn't try to pay me five figures. You need to obviously. Uh, we've put a dagger in that. You officially can't make seventy anymore, or hey, you'll die. By the way, I believe there's more to it, and uh, whatever fight that was being rumored is not my fault. It's not happening. So, Wait, was it money that? from my end? Huh? Yep. Huh? So, so you're agreed. From my end, I agreed to everything except the weight. From the other end, I believe there was a little bit more to it. And I don't know the details, but ah. you, I know George is boxing soon, you know, there's other stuff going on. Like, I don't, I don't know the details, but, um, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't entirely me. I believe there's just like, like I said, when I was in Melbourne, like there's a lot to it, you know? And, uh, when, when you're talking about getting two guys that have done a lot in their life or their career, to agree to terms, it's not as easy as like two guys that are on the up and trying to get to the UFC. Mm. You know, those guys are in a di very different position where, you know, they need fights. They want to stay active. They understand the domestic sort of uh, price range of purses. And, you know, every promoter pretty much pays the same. You know, they don't, like you said, most champions get 1500 to two and a half grand, you know, I mean, or two grand. Mm. So that's, that's pretty. That's pretty decent money. I mean, fuck, I wasn't getting that. You know, like I got fifteen hundred bucks in my last title fight, but I made five thousand dollars in commissions. You know, I sold a lot of tickets, over a hundred tickets to every show, kind of thing. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's like the money domestically is selling tickets, and the fighters you put on is based on who sells tickets. You know, yeah. a lot of the time, like obviously you got to fill the car. Like not everyone sells tickets. You know, some people are entertaining. They're going to bring people back anyway. Good online sort of numbers. Um, but there's a lot of people that sell a lot of tickets. You want to keep those guys in the shows. Um, and, you know, I'm not telling you guys anything that any other promoter isn't doing, even if they're not telling you. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, it's all common sense, which is not so common sometimes. But it's all common sense, you know. It, it, you just you make the numbers work. Um, it's not worth bickering over little tiny bits here and there. And as far as dealing with international athletes that have, well, like national athletes that have been international, you know, it's about you, you're not going to get every single one of them to fight on your card. You know, mm -hmm. that's never going to happen. Like, I know what Stoltz wants to fight. I tried to get him on my own card. You know, so it's not, it's never always going to happen. But it's about understanding the athlete, what their objectives are, what their goal is, and then, you know, what their expectations are. And if you can't meet them, just being honest and being like, hey, I can't meet those expectations. It's all good. Um, and, you know, that's just part of being open and transparent with them. Like, I've got nothing to hide. What is his 
I mean, he's boxing now. Do you know if it's the competitive bug or if it if he does if it is just you know to make extra money here and there? I have no idea, man. He's like forty-seven years old. Why is he going to make extra money? Well, I mean, I that's like yeah. if you jump on that hex car, do that grappling event with Van Heerden, like I think he's just he's just. But where was it? it? Where was it for nine years? You have to ask him that. I mean, maybe maybe, maybe he was building the life that funds his lifestyle now. I don't know. Like, nine years is a long time. Like, maybe, I don't know, like, he's got kids. Like, I don't know anything about George besides the fact that he went on a tear. He beat fucking Joe Lozon. I'll never forget that. That was memorable <laughs> for me. You know what I mean? He's He's a legend. You know, yeah, he's on a five fight losing streak plus a no contest, but it's like, uh, you know, he, he he got to the rankings. You know what I mean? He lost when he got there, but he got there. You know, and and no one should no one should discredit that, not at all. Um, but you know, potentially when he retired, he went off and, and built built that life that's funding his lifestyle now. Like I don't I don't really know the answer to that question, but I would imagine it's some kind of competitive this inside him that's making him want to compete um because can't be money fuck like like they don't pay you much for money do you know what i mean like you're not fighting for money fight one Mm -hmm. like should they pay that much to fight togo you know what i mean maybe they did Mm -hmm. maybe it's better than what they offered me i don't know but uh yeah I, i i don't I don't know why he's doing it. It's definitely a question you'd have to ask him what his motivation is. And I mean, as a as a fighter now, uh, you'll always be a fighter, and 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 now quite a successful promoter because even within five shows, man, it, it really is starting to feel like the the big three. I feel like in a couple of years, it, Hex, you Eternal, it it does feel like. The show when you get you know ten twenty under your belt, like we'll be talking about like who is going to take the lead, um, whether you're biased or not. In in my unbiased opinion of it, I really do think that that you guys are are coming a a, a long way with what you're producing. Where do you want to take beat down? Do you want it to end up in stadiums and and TV deals and all this sort of stuff, or or, or what's the the goal? That sounds like a fucking horrible idea, right? <laughs> Imagine the logistical nightmare I got to deal with coaching a Friday night class while the weigh-ins on during the day at a stadium. No, nah, I um look for me, it's uh you need to get behind me. All yeah, right, go for it. It's not a list, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Just skipping out on jiu-jitsu class early. Um, see, you, mate. Um, so uh, you know, for me, it's this is it's not stadiums, man. I don't want to fill stadiums. You know, I, I say this time and time again. I have a good product. I have an understanding of the industry from both a coaching and athlete point of view. Um, I'm learning as a promoter, but I believe I've been on enough promotions to understand a lot of that side of the industry as well. Um, and... You know, um, I, I'll i never lose sight of why I started it, same as my gym. Um, I started it to provide a platform for athletes to demonstrate their skill set and get to the end goal for them, which, you know, for some might be having one fight, for others it'll be to the UFC. I still don't think I'm competition for anyone. I don't really plan on being competition for anyone. I don't really want to sink anyone, you know what I mean? I just want to run my show in North Brisbane and uh, maybe somewhere else. And, uh, and you know, I, I, I'm not, I don't plan on shooting in people's backyards. You know what I mean? Like I don't, I don't understand why a whole bunch of promotions can't run somewhat in sync and successfully run their own businesses um, whilst providing a platform for athletes to perform. But what I do understand is if you have a monopoly on a business, it is great for your business. So look, there's the business side of things and then there's MMA. You know, my only interest is the growth of the sport. And um, if we focus on providing a good platform for people to 
to demonstrate their skill set and fight on, then I, I believe that, you know, in 10 shows time, people will still be talking about us just a little bit more. Um, again, obviously, if I was a biased person, I want to take over the world and I'd be like, beat down this shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> but at the end of the day, if I run a good show and people want to fight for me, I'll continue running a good show. And um, North Brisbane will have a, a place to go three times a year to, to attend an event. And that's, you know, ultimately I don't, I don't look, even with my gyms, I didn't set out and go, I'm going to have two gyms. I didn't even plan on having one as big as I got. I just wanted to coach for the rest of my life, you know, and it just evolved into something. And, and that's just, I think just a sign of, well, A, you have to be good at business, but B, you know, it's just, it's just doing what you love um, and trying to share that with other people. And from that, something grows. And, you know, I, I do really like promoting. Like when I first started, I, uh, I was like, you know, let's just run one show, see what happens. You know, uh, we ran one show. I was like, that was pretty cool. Mm. I didn't lose any money. Mm. You know what I mean? I didn't make it, but I didn't lose any mm. money. It's like, let's run another one. And now I kind of feel like I can't back out. So <laughs> I really enjoy it. Um, again, if you're not losing money, does it, you know, does it really matter? It's fun. I get to look back on it every every three months and go, well, that was pretty cool. And, you know, there's there's – people that do work for my promotion that get paid. I create work for people. Mm. Um, I don't try and take all the money myself. You know, these guys make money that they're doing the work for me. And we try to put some videos together for some of the athletes to make sure that they can promote themselves and they got a little bit of content there. And, and you know, I don't, I don't really know where that takes us. All I know is uh, we're going to start the next show. We're going to, uh, oh, hang on a sec. My mom's ringing me. I'll send her a voicemail. Oh, you can't do that to your mum. Oh, she's all good. All right. Well, look. So all I know is I don't really know where that, that's going to end up, man, but the next show is going to sell out. 14 fights, 28 fighters are going to put on a barn burner. Our main event's going to be cool hours, and uh, come March next year, we're going to do the same thing again. And in 10 shows' time, you'll still be talking to me, except Australian MMA will be massive, you know, and uh, beat down promotions will be talked about as one of the big three, so you call it. <laughs> and uh, who knows where we'll be? I don't. I don't have that. I don't plan that, man. Just the world will take me wherever I want to be. I guess. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a silly question because businesses all have an end goal. You know, they have a five year term and yeah, like ten year plan. And <laughs> I just, I literally enjoy. Like, I really enjoy promoting. It's fucking stressful and like. I'm sure that's why Cam O'Neill's got no hair left. <laughs> yeah, he told me that himself. He told me ages ago, like, you'll have no hair. And so, look, you know, it's it's really enjoyable. It's really stressful. Um, but I, I really do enjoy just, um, you know, watch, watching fighters fight. And I like it when they're, they're like, man, this is an unreal experience. And if mm. that's, that's what I get out of it, then sweet. Well, I mean, speaking of all of the actual card, um, what's some of the fights that you think are, are, are the go-to fights this weekend and, and what's your favourite that you're looking forward to? No, I don't have my whole card right in front of me. So I know well, then they can't, they can't be your favourite then. If they're not uh, in your head, they can't be your favourite. But, um, you know, um, I've, got, I've got these two guys. One's mine. One's from Dylan Andrews' gym. Uh, Matheson versus Rangi. Yeah, uh, Rizwan's from my gym. These these guys are six foot two, both at bantamweight, and they're both strikers. Um, so it's a pretty cool matchup. I'm really excited about it. Matheson's zero and one, got out grappled in his first matchup. Um, you know, I, I think these guys are as amateurs are pretty level. Right, they're both got great striking. They're both tall. They're both rangy. Their jiu jitsu and wrestling will be at the same level. Uh, it's just a really well matched up fight. Uh, I'm excited for that. Obviously, my guy isn't that I want him to win, but it, it, uh, as a promoter, it's a really fun fight. Mm. Um, you know, we lost the Mario Loga fight due to an injury, um, which was super disappointing because, you know, he's a crowd favorite. And um, Daryl, coming from Luistro Combat Academy, is, is a beast. He's 3-1, and, and it's just all knockout power. So mm -hmm. um, those two, we're going we're gonna to definitely set the house on fire. And I had them as my feature um, amateur fight so they were at the top of the amateur card 
Um, but we don't have any heavyweight males for this card, but we do have a heavyweight female. Yes. Fight. Please and... tell me about this one. Is this like the first one ever? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, so Virtue's got – um, she she's had a pro MMA fight. And uh, Elizabeth, um, she hasn't. And we accidentally matched pro fight up uh, because the girls asked to fight each other. Mm. So I just assumed we were going to have a pro fight. And then anyway, turns out we accidentally matched a fight, announced it as an amateur fight. And then we worked out that one had already had a pro fight, which I was not aware of. So I'm not on topology. They asked to fight each other. I was like, yeah, sweet. I mean, I'm not exactly scrounging around for options. There's not many heavyweight women about. So I was like, you know, if you guys want to fight each other, let's do it. So we announced it. Like, oh, she's had a pro fight already. I was like, fuck. Well, I better get back to the other team, let them know that. So I did. And they're like, well, it looks like we're fine pro. So <laughs> we ended up with an extra pro fight. Um, it's kind of funny. Again, you know, it cost me money, whatever. The fight was already matched. It was already announced. You know, these girls are really getting ready for a fight. You know, who cares? Like, just put it on. So we put it on. So now we've got a professional debut for Elizabeth. And I don't know how to say her last name without doing it some kind of injustice. But um, I will ask her before the weigh-in because I have to yell it out. And then uh, – and Virtue – um from ckb um but they're like fine pro and um they've got knockouts in kickboxing um and knockouts is amateur mma mm-hmm. so i don't really expect it to go to the ground i think we're just going to get both of them just standing there banging it out kickboxing style i kind of i kind of feel like that's what we're going to get i mean neither of them really really grapple i mean you can look at um Liz's uh, fights with the Oceanics and that, and she didn't grapple at all. She stood and struck, and then Virtue's kickboxing and stuff has has a, a few knockouts and that and whatnot. Um, I think that's a pretty cool fight. You don't you don't see it often, so um, it's nice to see. And um, I mean, I could go on about my own guys. You know, Jordan Gamble, Max Kelly is a great fight. Yeah. Um, you know, um, Jordan lost in his debut to um, Victor Lyle. And yeah. so, um, you know, Victor's got great striking. Jordan obviously wasn't able to get to the mat. Um, didn't try a lot, um, but just got outstruck. Did heaps of damage to Victor, um, but ultimately fell short in a decision. Max fell short against Tom Ackley in a decision, but really just got held up against um, the, the cage. And not much else happened besides him dropping Tom in the first round. So I'm excited for that one because both guys are 0 one as a pro. Yeah. But um, they both got great grappling. They both got good striking. I'd say Max probably has a power advantage and he's dropped every person he's fought. He just, uh, the running joke is he doesn't finish many of them off. But um, <laughs> I can have that running joke because he's my guy. <laughs> and you heard him before. He's a, he's, yeah. he's never short on a word. So, um. <laughs> That's that's an exciting fight, but ultimately for me, the top three fights is where it's at on this card. Um, co co main, if you want to call it that, the third one down, Jackson Weir White. Um, obviously had a, a great performance last time out against Declan. Declan tried yeah. a heavy wrestling game. Jackson was able to counter it, you know, the elbow king, so to speak, and he he won a decision. Um, but he's fighting Matt Kindness from DTV, so Dylan yeah. Andrews. From- Again, Matt's 2-0 and I was an amateur. I asked them if they were open to it. They jumped at it, couldn't wait for it. Um, Jackson's original opponent was Sam Miles. We didn't get to announce that fight because Sam dislocated his thumb and broke it, and he had to pull out a hex, and then he had to pull out of our show oh, as no. well. Yeah. Um, so, unfortunately, that one didn't get to the surface. No one even knew about that one, but that was a great fight. I'd love to run that one back in the future. Um, and Matt was willing to jump in there and, and make his pro debut. So that's going to be an absolute um, cracker of a fight. Um, the co-main event, Stuart Nickel versus Dan Shell, um, Moodley. I mean, Dan Shell's from South Africa. He's training out of ATT. He hasn't been in Australia long. He's got his family out here. Mm. He's 9-4 and four as a pro. Um, if you ask me, I, f- I feel like this is the biggest test that Nickel 
has had to date. Yeah. Um, he's six and zero. Oh. We all know what he's capable of. Everyone's seen it. Um, you know, and the guy's a killer on the ground, and and he's always going in wrestling comps and jiu-jitsu comps and and whatnot. And he's got a chin of granite. Um, mm. for a flyweight, he, he he'll walk through anything that's thrown at him. So I'm really excited for that fight. It, it's a crafty veteran, you know. Mm. Moodley has lost fights. He knows what it's like to lose, but he knows how to win. Um, you know, he's nine and four. And and that's a good record in MMA, you know, for 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 a, a guy that's experienced outside the UFC. Um, and so I feel like that's a really important fight, um, particularly in Nichols' career. Um, and it's a good way to introduce yourself to the Australian scene as a flyweight for Moodley. So that that's a really yeah. cool fight. Um, and I, I reckon that'll that'll set the house on fire that night. Um, and of course, you know. To see someone like Janae Harding, you know, same as we've seen Elliot Compton in the past, um, to see these guys fight domestically um, is something that, you know, people quite often thought they would never get to see again. You know, Janae's from the Gold Coast, or obviously New Zealand, but lived on the Gold Coast yeah. for some time. And I'm sure lots of people on the Gold Coast really didn't anticipate seeing her fight again. You know, she's been in Bellator and it's kind of like a close the door domestically. Yeah. We're not going to get to see that again and Bellator don't come to Australia. So, you know, I think that's a really good opportunity for people to see her. And for anyone that's seen Jamie fight, I mean, she does not take a backward step. Yeah. Like, she literally punches on. Um, we've seen that in her boxing fight recently, even though she dropped the decision. She just kept marching forwards, you know, and her, and her fights are the same. So I really think that that fight's going to be exciting. Um, if Janae has some kind of wrestling game plan, uh, I would be surprised fighting out of CKB. But, hey, yeah. she could shock me. Um, she does have a ground game. So, um, you know, she does have that kind of strategy. You'd expect that Jamie has done the work um, to get the fight where she wants it. Um, maybe she'll shock us and take it down. I don't know. But um, I, I just think it has the makings for a barn burner. But more importantly, it's nice to see a women's MMA fight headline in an Australian card. Um, so, yeah, I'm uh, I'm excited. But I, I just think if everyone's going to keep an eye out for a fight on that card, it should be the same main event outside of the main event. Well, I mean, they can all see it free, which is amazing that you do it uh, on on YouTube. Uh, it's, I mean, I don't want you to change that because uh, I'm throwing it through. It's, uh, it's just great. Um, and I mean, like I said, a top three pay per view uh, on uh, on YouTube for free. Um, and then tickets, they can still get them beatdown dot com you. But I don't. They'll probably. I don't know. I have to fix that. I have to fix that for you. That was, that was not the right website, guys. Don't go to beatdown.com.au. Go to beatdownpromotions.com.au. You get tickets there, or search beatdown promotions five on Eventbrite. Um, there is still tickets available. I wouldn't wait till after the weigh-in. That's typically where we sell what's left. Um, yeah. Look, it's going to be a great night. Um, we're very excited. I love a free stream on YouTube, unless mm-hmm. someone's you know, willing to pay me for a licensing fee. I don't plan on changing that. Um, so hopefully we can reach more people. Um, internationally, we have a really good reach as well. So, yeah, I'm excited about this card and uh just happy to share with you my very relaxed approach to promoting. I, and, I, uh, yeah, I do like it. Um, finally, I just do need your thoughts on how does your jiu-jitsu match go against Simon Carson? Oh. oh, so I recently found out Simon was a black belt. Uh, <laughs> so, um, hey, I don't know, man. Um, fuck, I got no idea. Just a couple of old boys, eh? <laughs> um, I don't know, man. I, you know, when when they asked me if I wanted to be matched up on that card, I said, yeah, sure. You know, obviously, I prefer to be matched up against someone who's also professional MMA athlete, black yeah. belt in jiu-jitsu. Um, similar styles, I think, make for an exciting type mm. grappling match. I, I don't think putting me in there with, you know, someone who's going to sit in the middle of a cage and essentially play that sort of sports jiu-jitsu game as much as I love it, it's mm. just not really going to be an entertaining match. Yeah. Um, but if you want your money's worth, match me up against another MMA guy and let's wrestle it out and look for some front chokes. How much do you cost for a jiu-jitsu match? Is it discounted? 
I'm going for three. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh. but they did ask me if I wanted to do combat jiu-jitsu, and I was like, fuck no, not for three. So uh, <laughs> I don't get punched in the face for free, but jiu-jitsu to me is uh, – Oh man, I, I don't I don't really I explained it to someone this morning. If you went to the NRL and you asked an NRL player to play a game of football, they should charge you for it. If you ask them to play touch on the weekend, it's kind of just a bit of fun, <laughs> right? So that that's sort of the way I look at it. You know, jiu-jitsu, I don't care about getting paid for jiu-jitsu. You know, I've I've been paid to fight my whole life and um, you know, some kind of combat job and whatnot. So I, I'm not really focused on that. I, I just um jiu-jitsu is jiu-jitsu, it's just a little bit of fun and Go down there and represent. Awesome. Uh, mate, I appreciate the time. Uh, like I said, if anyone wants to get tickets, go to promotionsbeatdown.org uh, and um, and pick yourself up. Go on, Matt, you. Some tickets. Come on, mate. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not a journalist. I don't know what I'm doing. All right. <laughs> <laughs> see you later, mate. I, I will mate. see you at the show on YouTube. <laughs> I can't wait. If you come to Brisbane, I'll give you a ticket. Oh, sick. 